everyone, thanks for clicking on this video. I am doing a reaction to a video that Joseph Morris posted. His link will be in the description, along with a couple other links. He posted this about Micah Miller, her, about her, but mainly about J.P., her so-called husband, piece of shit, good for nothing dude, um, and him being caught in his lies and trying to do a poor me, pity me bullshit. So let's watch this and please like also, it's free, it doesn't cost you anything, and subscribe. John Paul Miller was just caught in so many lies. It is absolutely insane. And me and Gabby, well, we have the receipts. So who knows what else this guy is lying about? And also at the end of this video, I'm going to talk about what I believe happened, my own theory. So stick around. And I definitely think the cops need to take a closer look at what all the cyber sleuths across the internet have dug up. But before we do that and get into this video, please make sure you like, comment, and subscribe so you can hang out with the best private investigator on all of YouTube. That is Miss Gabby. So let's get into it. JP sent a video to True Crime Re on TikTok trying to clear his name, and it's nothing but contradictory statements. And personally, I find this guy really hard to listen to, and he shows classic narcissistic traits like Darvo where they will deny the allegations and try to make himself out to be a victim kind of thing but the receipts don't lie so let's start playing this clip my wife uh, was diagnosed with bipolar 2 disorder schizophrenia uh, dependent personality disorder and several other uh, diagnoses by different doctors at different times all throughout the past seven years the two diagnoses that stayed with her um, every single year was uh, schizophrenia and bipolar 2. bipolar 2 is where you're super high and you want to give away a thousand dollars you know uh, so the low is you want to end your life and um she um went super high and super low many many times over the years and it was a a struggle almost a constant struggle but we got through it we got through it and um the schizophrenia is where she would hear voices or talk to people that were not there uh, she'd play chess with people that were not there without a chessboard um she would sometimes forget who i was or forget that i was her husband um she'd forget who she was I don't forget that she was my wife. Sometimes she'd forget who her family is, uh, things like that. Sure, Jan. I do not believe that. I can understand why she would want to forget who the hell you were. Uh, but I highly, highly doubt that she forgot who her family was and all that. She's not around to uh, make a video addressing your damn lies. But people know their lies, allegedly their lies. I don't believe a damn word you're speaking, honestly, at all. Except that she was your wife. But you weren't concerned about her. Weren't you uh, spending time with another lady right after her memorial or her uh, get-together thing? After someone passes, I guess it's, yes, it's a memorial. Didn't you go out to a bar and you were giggling and laughing with this lady? You you didn't give a shit. You didn't care. You don't care now. You didn't care then. And you're a bunch of lies and bullshit. That's all you have spewing out of your mouth, bro. And I don't even need to say anything because the top comment on this video is, quote, aren't those his diagnosis? End quote. So with JP, it feels like every accusation is an omission. It turns out JP is the one, allegedly, that has schizophrenia. So this is Micah Miller's sister, Anna Francis, spilling all of the tea. John Paul was take, had been taking, um, probably since he was in his um, older teens, um, early 20s, he started taking medication for his mental health. He's been on schizophrenia medication 
for over 20 years. People also believe that Micah actually doesn't even have mental illness since JP has provided absolutely zero proof of her medical records. And if she does have mental illness, it was most likely brought on by JP as her family has said. So people are also pointing out it's interesting that JP mentioned that Micah was playing chess because an anonymous participant on the Facebook group, Justice for Micah Miller, which is shout out to them, they're doing a great job, writes this, quote, thought it was interesting that JP mentioned Micah playing chess in his newest video. Wasn't that what Chris was supposed to be doing at the pool the day he fell in and drowned, end quote. So this actually gave me chills, and I thought it was interesting as well that JP in this video was wearing what looks like to be an orange jumpsuit. So maybe that's um, premonition or Micah using her voodoo in the afterlife. But Chris Skinner mysteriously passed away and also happened to be JP's alleged new girlfriend's ex-husband. Oh, what a confusing web we weave. I don't know if you got that. So JP's ex-wife, Allison, actually said she found it quote unquote chilling. There are two passings related to JP. So people are wondering if Chris Skinner was unalive so that JP and Susie Skinner could be together. I'm not saying that he did that. I'm not trying to get sued here, but the connection does give me pause. And a lot of people are pointing out that this is hella interesting and sus. So Melody writes, the only people that say she was mental is JP, his dad, and Charles Randall. All her family, coworkers, friends, and everyone else says she was not. Now, isn't that odd, which is what we said earlier. So again, no one's buying what JP is selling in this video. Anyway, let's continue with the video where he talks about this cryptic March 11th date. On March 11th, remember that date because uh, you super sleuths out there are going to need to know that date uh, for the future. But on March 11th, something uh, happened that kind of forever changed the course of our lives. And um, she went really um, deep into the schizophrenia and was um, uh, delusional and uh, uh, accusing me of certain things, slashing tires or sending a naked picture or uh, stalking her or things like that that I didn't do. But you did do those things, jackass. She spoke of it. You did those things and you admitted that you did those things. So try again, uh, bitch boy number one. You're on the chopping block, bro. And, um... So the problem with this is that there is literally proof that this is not the case and this is just a blatant lie. I mean, there's a police report that documents Micah Miller being tracked and stalked by J.P. Miller. I believe there were like four police reports where Micah was trying to obtain a restraining order and was documenting this sketchy behavior by J.P. Miller. And I believe on the day that Micah passed, J.P. knew Micah was onto him being a stalker, so JP sent someone else to do his bidding. That's why you see her looking at the green shirt guy and rolling her eyes, because she knew JP had sent him. So now would be a good time to say that I personally believe, I'm not saying this is fact, that Solid Rock Church might just be a cult, because people are still showing up to the congregation, despite JP being exposed by both of his former wives for allegedly grooming girls not of age, among other heinous things. There's also an FBI investigation for the church allegedly misappropriating funds through their charity. So I'm sure you're confused by the email on my screen, but JP must have forgotten that he sent this email where he basically says straight from the horse's mouth that he did do these things. In one, he admits to damaging her car. And then in another, he admits to posting a photo of her not wearing clothing on Facebook. So, I mean, is this JP schizophrenia speaking right now? Like, how did he forget that he actually admitted to doing this and like 500,000 views on this video was out there and he's trying to categorically deny that, like, People aren't dumb, JP. And let's continue on with this video just full of lies, in my opinion. And we worked hard to keep her on her medicine. We worked very hard to keep her enjoying her life. Uh, she didn't have to cook a single meal. She didn't have to clean. She didn't have to work. Uh, she just had to take her medicine and enjoy her life. And um, we did our best with what we had. But When you say we, who are you talking about? Because her family is not saying any of the bullshit that you're spewing. So when you say we, who is that? 
She just needed to get away from you, divorce your punk ass, and go on with her life. And I really wish she would have had a chance to do that. But uh, something happened. I believe you know what happened. But, of course, you're going to lie. You're not going to admit shit because it's poor me, pity me, narcissist bullshit. Damn, you're such a punk ass bitch. So this is also a lie because Micah was actually a part of many programs at Solid Rock Church. I mean, she was working and I actually kind of found this a bit disrespectful to say like, oh, she didn't even work. Like all she had to do was take her medicine when she was alive. But she was in charge of a youth group at Solid Rock and also was like doing a lot of public relations for the church. So this video is from Robbie Harvey on YouTube. But if she was so sick, then you have to question why was Micah Miller in charge of so many programs at Solid Rock? church. Specifically, she was in charge of the youth. If a woman is so mentally unstable, why was she allowed to be a part of teenagers' lives? According to multiple sources, when Michael was in charge of the youth group, it flourished. She did a phenomenal job, and parents loved her. I've spoken to many parents who had several children underneath the leadership of Micah Miller at Solid Rock Church. None of them ever saw any signs of mental illness. Not only that, Micah Miller seemed to be the face of Solid Rock Church, appearing in multiple videos on their Facebook page. It's October 12th from 2 to 3.30 p.m. And of course, we all know she was on stage every single Sunday leading worship. Anyway, I believe the FBI needs to open an investigation into Micah Miller's passing because I think Micah was being stalked in the moments leading up to her unaliving. She knew she was being watched by the green shirt guy at the pawn shop. They even made eye contact at one point and she rolled her eyes. There's even a moment where as she leaves, the green shirt guy goes up to the window to watch her depart the pawn shop from her car. So this video is from- I want to know what you guys think about this next clip coming up. I want you, I want you to say in the comments what you think about this case in general, but about this green shirt guy, I want to know what you guys think of this. Um, also, please follow the people uh, that are mentioned in this clip as far as this gentleman right here and uh, the person that posted the this part coming up about the green shirt guy. My names are Robbie Harvey and Freedom Voice Online and yeah so please go show them love, subscribe to them Go show Joseph Morris some love. Subscribe to him. He does really good with his work. Great videos. You guys really enjoy his channel. From Freedom Voice Online. Uh, it was the guy in the green shirt that really raised the eyebrow. And I got a lot of comments on my last video. Uh, basically asking, how did I know that he was actually stalking her once he went through the doors? Well... Before I actually put that video out, I took a good hard look at the video. And one of the things I noticed was that if you'll notice here, the guy in the green shirt, he has his hands behind his back. Now, when you look at the video uh, that I posted, you look up at the timestamp, you can see him actually bending over if you look really good here. And I don't know if your computer is large enough, your screen is large enough to see it. But you can see him walking toward the window. And the interesting thing about it is he's in the same position with his arms behind his back. If you look really close at 1234 and 20 seconds, you can see his arms behind his back. You can see him clearly walking up to the window. Now, I'm going to zoom even closer. You can see him sort of bending over. You can see the arms behind the back, just like he was when he before he walked into the jury mark. So uh, this was the conclusion that I sort of arrived at as a result of watching the video. Then when you put it side by side, and I synchronized it perfectly, 
When you put it side by side, as he's walking up to the window, that's exactly around the time when Micah was backing out. I mean, you can look at the video yourself and you'll see uh, the timestamps are, are accurate. So the question is, was she being stalked? Was she being followed? So do you guys believe she was being stalked and being followed and all that? I believe she was. I don't know if it was by this green shirt guy um, at all. And I don't think anybody but him knows about it, you know. I, I mean, I don't know. I believe she was being stalked and followed. I just don't know that it was from that guy or not. Kind of seems like it, but I'm not willing to put that on somebody if that's not the case, you know. So please let me know what you guys think about that, if you think that she was being stalked and followed. And on my last video, I actually posted this image, and thanks for all the feedback. There's a traffic cam of what appears to be the green shirt guy's car following her closely. You guys pretty much debunked the van video. So I want to be clear, this is actually from Flow Daddy Flow on TikTok. The van was actually debunked, but I'm still on the fence about that silver car. Um, I mean, looking closely at it, it might be missing the sunroof, but it's blurry. So in my opinion, it's still hard to tell. Like that car could be similar. So again, the image on the left is the traffic cam and on the image on the right is the parking lot outside the pawn shop. And some people think the cars actually line up. And of course, people in the comment section say that they know who green shirt guy is and it's a cop from a town over. And I'm not gonna name his name, but yeah, they're saying it's a cop and you can just easily find his information online. It would make a lot of sense if her passing was covered up by officials and the police were in on it. Because personally, I think the 911 call was faked using AI by cloning Micah's voice. I also think it was a huge red flag that Micah's body was allegedly covered in bruises and the cremation was rushed. Of course, the scene itself looked very staged. There's no current to take her behind that one corner in the slough. So her body was placed there. Micah also warned that if she were to pass with a bullet in her head, it wasn't her, it was JP. And those are her words, not mine. So I just want to know, what do you guys think? Sound off in the comments below. Well, I hope you guys found this video informative. Please go check out Joseph Morris's channel. The names of the people in the video as far as like the two YouTube channels, the two TikTok pages. Please go follow all of them. I would greatly appreciate it. I'm sure they would greatly appreciate it. And please, if you go follow them, let them know I sent you. And please leave in the comments below just what you think of this video and the case in general. What do you think of JP? Do you think he had any hand in any of this? Or he maybe he knew who did it? Or do you believe he did it because she was just fed up with him? Once again, and I've stated this before, if that's the case, that's still his fault. He pushed her to that point. And isn't it crazy how he said he didn't post that revealing picture and he didn't uh, slice her tires and such? But then there were the emails stating that uh yeah he did he admitted it and he apologized he said he wanted to hurt her like he was hurt so what makes me think that her unaliving is any different you know what i'm saying so please let me know in the comments below take care everyone and have a great day